For at TV, the world is thinking. Let's look at some examples of geoengineering. And this is not an exhaustive list, but these are some of, some of the main ones. The, the one that's talked about the most, and is somewhat easy in some ways, is blocking sunlight. You only have to reduce the amount of sunlight hitting the Earth by about 2% to reverse the effects of climate change. And there's two main ways of doing that. The most talked about one is reducing smoke or putting sulfates in the upper atmosphere using planes or rockets or other things. And, and that's sort of what we know that will work because that's what happens after a volcano. And the Earth does cool down after a volcano. So we, for a couple of years until the smoke settles out of the air. So we know that will work. Now, it turns out there's some kind of bad side effects, like one study showed that, yes, you could reduce the temperature by a couple degrees but it would stop raining in India and those kinds of things. Also, the problem with this is it's not solving the problem, it's just masking the problem. So once you start this, you have to keep doing it, and if you ever stop, the temperature six months later is going to spike up by a few degrees, and then you're gone. So you know, if you don't have the budget to fly the planes anymore. Uh, so this is really just sort of, a, at best, a temporary solution, maybe to fix a short-term problem like the melting of the permafrost while you're doing other things, to, to fix the CO2 in the atmosphere. Oh, the other, I'm sorry, I, I should go back here. The other one is to build uh, ships that take seawater and pulverize it and throw it up in the atmosphere and create low-level clouds. Ships do this anyway with their smokestacks, but they make small clouds. This would make big clouds, and you can put the ships where you want them, and, and you can be very strategic about that. So there's some interesting capabilities about that. The other thing to do, and this is somewhat controversial, is to uh, put iron in the ocean and iron is sort of a fertilizer for algae. It makes algae grow, and algae eats CO2, and then hopefully they die and sink to the bottom and stay there for a really long time if you do it in the right parts of the ocean. Recent studies show that it doesn't quite work as they hoped, that fish eat the algae pretty quickly and it keeps the, the carbon up near the surface. So more study needs to be done on this to see whether this is actually going to be effective. It's relatively cheap, though, compared to lots of other things. This one I actually kind of like. It's, it's called biochar. And biochar is simply taking any plant material and turning it into charcoal. If you heat something without oxygen, it doesn't turn into CO2. It turns into C because there's no O2. There's no air in there to, to react with. And so that's how they make that for a thousand years. You put wood in an oven that's really hot and you close off the vent so the air can't get in. And eventually it turns into charcoal. Well, that's good because you can take this charcoal and just throw it back down on the ground and it retains water, it acts as a soil stabilizer. Not exactly a fertilizer, but it helps plants grow. And so if you grow really large amounts of biomass or just take all of the leftover biomass from corn or other plants and turn it into charcoal, it won't degrade into CO2. You do this on a really large scale, you can actually suck carbon out of the atmosphere. And it's relatively cheap. There are issues, it does make gas, which you can use as a fuel, there's some, you know, bad parts of the gas you have to deal with and things like that. But you know, compared to a lot of other things happening, it may be one of the less, uh, more benign forms of dealing with it. Uh, the most obvious thing to do is to reforest the planet. Um, I have a friend who's working on a program where he gives solar cookers to, to, village, uh, to uh, families in India so that they don't go and burn the wood, the, you know, the dead trees or cut the trees down. And uh, they, they also don't have to walk for miles every day to get the wood. And he also gives them a rechargeable flashlights so they don't have to burn propane. And he also gives them a free cell phone. And both the, the flashlights and, and cell phone are rechargeable only when the solar cooker is hot. So it kind of encourages them to do that. And then if they use the cell phone, and, uh, I'm sorry, they use the solar cooker and they keep the cows off out of uh, the, the land, then they get free cell phone minutes. And so this is a, and it's, he's doing experiments on this right now. It looks pretty promising, but this shows what happens when you keep the cows off the land for just a few years there. So it's the same, the same shot, basically, just a couple years apart. So there's others. Um, this one I actually kind of like. This is just building machines, big, expensive machines that just suck carbon out of the air. And then you compress it and you pump it underground where it came from in the first place. You pump it into old oil wells or aquifers and things like that. This will cost a trillion dollars at least a year to run, and it will be the biggest bargain we ever had if we can do it. 
talk, there are a bunch of people working on this right now. They're small, small prototypes and things like that. And there's a lot of issues I have to actually to overcome. But this is, you know, when, <laughs> when everything else starts to hit the fan, this is something that we're probably going to do. I actually think we should do, first of all, I think we should spend heavily on researching these now because you don't want to find out that the, the, the bad effects are worse than whatever you were fixing on, on these things. So we should research them and understand them really well and pick all of the ones that seem like they'll work and try them all. And hopefully, even if this one can suck 100% of the CO2 we need to suck out, who knows, it might, it might not work well. So let's also reforest. Let's also try biochar. Let's try them all and see which ones work and which ones don't work. So that's the good news is that there are some things on the horizon. But again, if you use this as an excuse for not uh, limiting your CO2, it, 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 these, these won't save us.